Lesson seven, yeah. So guys, this is gonna be mostly review for you from Science 10, so it, it should be a bit comforting and familiar, okay? Just like when we when you first looked at that graph on the quiz, you were terrified, and then when we went through it, you're like, oh, right, I really should have remembered that. And you should have, but that's okay, okay? The whole purpose of review is to remind you of things, okay? Um, so what we gotta go over today is understand what information can be read from both position versus time and velocity versus time graphs, okay? Understand that the graphs that we use and the equations on our formula sheet come from the same place, okay? We usually use graphs to derive the formulas that we use, okay? That's usually where they come from, okay? And we're gonna try and illustrate that as much as we can here uh, over the next few days. Okay, so we're going to start out with position versus time graphs. No trick here. What can I read directly off the graph? Position and time. That's what the graph is showing. So I will know where the object is at various points in time. That's the purpose of a position time graph. Okay, now other things that I can infer from a position versus time graph. I can look at the shape of the graph and tell what kind of motion is going on. All right, I can see whether the object is not moving, whether the object is moving forwards, backwards, at a constant velocity, accelerating. All of that can be determined by the shape of the graph. These are things I need to know when I look at a graph because it could be very easy for me to put a multiple choice question on a unit exam that just shows a position versus time graph. And the question is, what is the object doing in part A? Okay, and it would be, you know, if it was just a flat line, then you would say the object is standing still because the position is not changing, okay, or something like that. Everybody follow me on that. So interpreting a graph is going to be an important skill for you. Okay, so looking at this, okay, the first part of this graph here, which is supposedly of a train, some kind of bullet train, I guess, okay, um, this first part of the graph here is showing a diagonal line, okay, during that part of the graph, the object is traveling at a constant velocity of 180 kilometers per hour. How do I know that when I have a position versus time graph with a diagonal line, that's supposed to be perfectly diagonal. I know it curved at the end, but it's diagonal, okay? Um, if it has a diagonal line, how do I know that means it's traveling at a constant velocity? Besides the fact that you probably memorized it in Science 10. I want you to understand why you memorized it. Okay, it's going up at a constant rate. Okay, that's the key thing. Any diagonal line goes up and over the same amount every single time, which means the position of the object changes by the same amount every time interval on this graph. All right, so on this particular graph here, okay, every hour the train will have changed its position by 180 kilometers. Okay, that's why we get that steady incline or decline if it's if it's uh, you know going backwards. Okay, uh, showing us that the position is changing by a constant amount because that's what velocity is. Okay, velocity is the rate of change of position. Okay. All right. During this part of the graph, we see that the line starts to flatten. Okay gets to here and then it's flat after that. How do we know that means, and they've written decelerating there, we don't like to use that term so much, but it's slowing down. How do we know that? Because the rate that it moves up is getting smaller. Right, okay, the rate that it's moving at is getting smaller and smaller, okay? We just said that a diagonal line here tells us it's moving at a constant rate. Well, what we see here is that during this part, it traveled, you know, a fair distance, but during this equal time interval, it didn't travel as far. And during this equal time interval, also again, not as far, equal time interval, not as far, okay? It's getting slower and slower and slower, okay? And we know that on this kind of graph, once the line is flat, the position of the object is no longer changing at all, right? It's not moving anymore, okay? So if we see a line that's flattening, that means that it's obviously gotta be slowing down. Okay, then we've got this part of the graph here where it's flat, okay? Object's position is unchanged during that time. Then we see the graph curve upwards. All right, if it's curving upwards, that means that during this time interval, it went this far. During this time interval, it went further. And during this time interval, even further. So it's gotta be speeding up, okay? It's got a positive rate of acceleration. It's going faster and faster because it's changing its position by a greater amount every time interval. 
All right, so I got to be able to recognize that a curve on, a, on this kind of graph means there's a change in velocity going on. Okay. All right, is that ringing a bell? Okay, so those are things, interpretation things, interpretation of a graph that you would have to do. Okay. Now, um, for slope calculations, yeah, sure, you can calculate slope by doing rise over run, but very rarely do you ever get the opportunity to do that in physics, okay? So very often, we don't use this. Instead, we use this. Y equals MX plus B. Everybody seen the graphing equation before? If you took math 10, the answer should be yes, okay? Because it's in math 10, all right? Um, so graphing equation, Y equals MX plus B, okay? That means Y is the Y value of any point. So if we chose this point right here, the Y value would be D1, whatever that is, okay? X is the X value of any point on the graph as well. So that would be this time right here, okay? What's M? Slope, right. M is the slope of the line. All right, so M is the slope, and B is the y-intercept, right. So this right here would be B. Okay, right there would be B, where the best fit line crosses the y-axis, okay, or the y-intercept. All right, on a position versus time graph, what does the slope of this line tell me? Okay, it will tell me that yes, it is moving at a constant rate, but will it tell me what that rate is? Yes, it will, okay? If I manipulate this equation for slope, okay, I'm gonna have y minus b divided by m. Everybody okay with that? Okay, the manipulation of that formula, right? I'm just following the rules of algebra. I moved what wasn't attached to m first, so I subtracted b, and then I divided by x. Okay, so that gave me y minus b over, sorry, over x, sorry, not over m, over x. That's why you guys were all looking at me funny. Okay, y minus b over x equals m. So if I look at this graph, okay, the y values are positions because this is a position versus time graph. The x values are all times. So really, when I manipulate this, what I'm doing is taking the final position, subtracting the initial position, and dividing by, what formula is that? Displacement. Displacement over time, which calculates velocity, okay? That's where V equals D over T comes from. It's the slope of a line on a position versus time graph. Hmm? You're right. Okay, uh, so does everyone kind of follow that? Like this would be Y up here, this would be B down here. So the difference between them would be the change in position, okay? How much I change the position by, right? And then X would be this here, that would be the total time, right? So I've taken total displacement, divided it by the total time, and now I have the average velocity for that object, okay? From the slope of the line. Okay, tomorrow's lab, okay, we're going to be using y equals mx plus b on a position versus time graph. We're going to build several position time graphs because we're going to run these little motorized carts, battery operated motorized carts. We're going to use electronic data gathering equipment instead of how you did in Science 10, which was you had the, the measuring tape laid out on the floor and you had to eyeball the whole thing. We don't do that. We, we take it seriously in physics, okay? We have these little uh, sonar devices that actually measure where the exact position of the cart as it travels away. It's way more accurate and way faster, okay, to do it that way. So um, we'll be doing it that way tomorrow and we'll be using Y equals MX plus B for a position versus time graph, okay? So exactly what we just did here. All right, questions on how V equals D over T is actually the slope of this line. All right, another example of the kind of question you might get to do with position versus time graphs. There's a whole bunch here actually, okay? First off is I might just ask you what's going on in each section of the graph. So in this first section of the graph, what's the object doing? Nope. Moving forwards at a constant velocity. If it was accelerating, the graph would look like that. It'd be curved, remember? Okay, so we don't have 
in acceleration here, we have a constant rate of change of position. Okay, it's changing its position by the same amount every interval. So traveling in a forward direction at a constant velocity. What's it doing in part B? Not moving. What's it doing in part C? Right, moving backwards, moving in a negative direction at a constant rate or a constant velocity. Okay, in part D, not moving. Okay, where is the object going faster, E or F? How do we know E? Okay, less time to get same distance. The slope is steeper. Okay, we know that slope represents velocity because the steeper line is moving faster. Okay, so I could ask you that. Another thing I might ask you could be, um, what is the total displacement between time zero and um, 10 seconds? Between zero and 10 seconds, what's the total displacement? Okay. We know from our formula sheet that displacement can be calculated by the change in position. Can I find the different positions on this graph? Okay, my final position at time 10 seconds is right here. Okay, so it's negative 10. And my initial position was zero. What's my total displacement to 10 seconds? Negative 10 meters. Okay, even easier question. What was my velocity? Average velocity between zero and 10 seconds. You already did most of the work. Negative one meter per second. Okay, we just calculated that the displacement was negative 10 meters. That took 10 seconds. All right? Just V equals D over T. Over the entire trip, what's the total distance traveled? This will require you to probably write a couple of things down. Because if you're thinking it's zero, that's the displacement over the entire trip. Okay? It does travel quite a bit further than that distance-wise. First off, am I looking for a vector or scalar quantity here? Scalar. scalar. So it doesn't matter whether I'm going forward or backward on this graph, does it? It just matters how far I go. Okay, how far do I go in part A? Six meters. How far do I go in part B? Zero. Okay, and then in part C, I go from six to negative 10, so that's 16 meters. Everyone all right with that? Okay, then I don't go anywhere here, and then I go another 10 meters between E and F. Okay, everyone all right with that? Okay, so 10 plus 16 is 26, plus six more is 32. Okay, total distance traveled is 32 meters. I'm all right with that. Okay, very, very like typical kind of question that you might get. All right, assuming the entire trip takes 18 seconds. All right, so we're gonna say, even though that line kind of doesn't look like it ends at 18, we'll say there's a little flat part that goes across to 18. If the whole trip takes 18 seconds, what's the average speed? Again, you've already done half the work, more than half. Okay, so average speed is total distance divided by total time. We already calculated the total distance. The total time is 18 seconds. Okay, 32 over 18 is gonna be what, 1.9 something? 1.7. Okay, 1.7 meters per second. Don't need a direction, speed is scalar. Right? These are very much like the kind of questions you could get. These would likely be multiple choice kind of questions though, because they don't involve like, you know, really a whole lot of difficult processing. Okay? 
All right, any questions on that part there? Okay, is it feeling a little bit more familiar now? Ringing the bell a little bit from Science 10? Okay, the other day, and actually with our, uh, our first quiz question with the bear, okay, um, we were saying that in order to calculate average velocity, Okay. We want to use the total displacement and divide it by the total time. We don't want to add two velocities together and divide by two because they may not represent equal parts of the trip. Everyone kind of recall that? Okay. That's what this first graph here is showing. Okay. Um, in this graph, for two-thirds of the trip, the object travels at 50 kilometers per hour. For the last third of the trip, it travels at 100 kilometers per hour. Okay. But the average is 67 kilometers per hour per hour, not 75, okay? Because again, this wasn't equal halves of the trip. Everyone follow me there? Okay, so what we do is we take the total displacement, two kilometers, it started at zero and went to two, okay? We divide that by the total time, 0 0.03 hours, okay? And that gets us our average velocity. We don't just take the 100 plus 50 and divide by two, okay? It's not gonna reflect that for more of the trip, we traveled at the slower velocity, okay? All right, uh, this next or this uh, bottom graph here, okay? During this first part here, the object is doing what? Moving in a positive direction at a constant velocity, right? Okay, what's it doing here? Not moving, what's it doing here? Yeah, actually it's accelerating negatively here, okay? It's accelerating, it's going faster in a negative direction, okay? The line's getting steeper, so it's going faster in a negative direction, okay? Um, What's it doing in part B? So they see part B down there at the bottom. Not moving again, right, okay, this is flat here. So we see a steepening curve here, and then we see down here a flattening curve, and the flattening curve again means that the object is slowing down, All right? Um, and then we have, again, a steepening curve right here, and then another kind of flattening curve there at the end. So just remember those curves, okay, either mean it's accelerating, in a positive direction or accelerating in a negative direction, it could mean speeding up or slowing down. Okay, it depends on the situation and the type of curve. Okay, now you're not going to be asked to calculate instantaneous velocity from a graph because it's really difficult for me to mark that because everyone will draw it a little bit differently and I'll have this huge range of answers that I'll have to accept. So I don't generally do it, but okay, it's still important for you to know how you would accomplish this. So in order to teach you how you accomplish this, I have to teach you the only thing I understood in university calculus. That was the very first day. It was a very sad course. I still passed, but I didn't understand anything. I just memorized the examples in the textbook and wrote them down on the final exam and got part marks for method. I don't recommend that. It worked for me because I was a really good memorizer, okay? Um, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend it, okay? And the really unfortunate thing is I had a really good prof too. I just, it just didn't make any sense to me for whatever reason. Um, but anyway, the only thing I understood is this. To a mathematician, a curve is an infinitely large number of infinitely small straight lines strung together, okay? That's why it can change its slope. Okay, it's always changing its slope because it's always changing the steepness of the tiny little lines that you can't see, right? It would be like if you were looking at a low resolution picture or video, what can you see in a low resolution picture or video? You can see the pixels, right? Because a computer can't make curves. It can make really, really small squares. And as long as those squares are so small that we can't see them, it looks like curves and it looks like the edges are smooth, okay? If it's low resolution, the pixels are bigger and we can see those edges and it doesn't look nice, okay? So when a mathematician looks at a curve, they see the pixels. They see the tiny little lines that are angled steeper and steeper and steeper that make this up. So when I look at this curve and if a question asks me, calculate the velocity at point A, I know that there's a little tiny straight line that exists right there. And that little tiny line has a slope. And the slope of any line on a position time graph is equal to velocity. So as long as I can make that line long enough that I can calculate its slope, I can calculate the velocity at that point. That's the only way for me to do it because I can't calculate the slope of a curve. It's always changing. Okay? So what I have to do is draw a tangent. 
Everyone remember what a tangent is for math? It's a line that touches a curve but doesn't cross it. Because it only touches it, it's parallel to the curve. In other words, it's parallel to that imaginary tiny little line that exists right here. Okay, so that's what I do. Okay, I just take a ruler and I make a line that touches the curve but doesn't cross it. Okay, at that point, I'm going to adjust a little bit here. Come on. Something like that. Okay, there's my line. Now I've got a long enough line that I could probably do a slope calculation with this point right here and probably that point right there, I could do a slope calculation with those, okay? I could do change in position divided by change in time and know the slope of the line at that point. Everybody all right with that? Okay, again, it's not something I'm likely going to ask you because if I asked you to do this, everybody would draw that line a little differently and I'd have to have this range of answers that I would accept, okay? And that's really weird because it's hard to say, okay, this one, this one that's 100th off from this one is not worth a mark, but this one is. Okay. It's kind of hard to make a cutoff in there. Okay, All right, so that's how you do it. Now, to show you that that's true, let's look at what this graph is actually saying. In the first part of this graph, the object is doing what? Right, it's going faster and faster. All right, but what's it doing here where it kind of peaks? Yeah, it stops for an instant. Okay, right here, the curve actually starts to flatten. Okay, and at point B, it is flat, and then it accelerates negatively. Okay. What is this a graph of? Right. Something thrown in the air. Okay. This first part is me applying an, a force to the object and accelerating it upwards. Once it leaves my hand, which should be right about here. Okay. What's accelerating it after that? Gravity. Once it leaves my hand, gravity is trying to pull it back to earth. That's why it slows down slows down, and when it gets to its highest point, stops for an instant, and then accelerates back down to me. That's why both sides are identical. It's gravity on both sides of the peak. Okay, Here, where the curve flattens would be where I catch the marker, slow it down to zero. Okay, That's that high level interpretation of a graph. All right. Okay, so just just showing you here that kind of bigger, but just to prove, okay, we said that right here the object is stopped for an instant. Agreed? Okay, so if I apply the same thing that I was telling you, I draw a tangent line. Okay, there's a tangent that just touches B. What's the slope of that line? Zero. It's horizontal. All right, kind of proves that the instantaneous velocity at B would be zero. Okay, um, so I'm going to have you guys try a couple of position versus time graph problems here for a little bit, just to kind of reinforce how we do things with position versus time graphs. Okay, so we'll call those up out of the workbook here. All right, so same file you used yesterday, except, whoop. Just move, come on. Whoa, this is really messed up, guys. Fine, be that way. Oh, it's really messed up. Let's just undo everything I did. All right, so I'm going to have you guys working on this graphing worksheet. No, sorry, not the right one. I want you guys to work on question, where is it? This one here, question 12. Okay, so this is the graph that goes with question number 12. Okay, it's a position versus time graph. And I want you to calculate the average velocity of the bus during each of the segments. Okay, so this would be part A, this would be part B, this would be part C. Okay, um, well, we can blow that up a little bit so you can see it better here.
Okay. You may have to look at that one on your phone so you can see the grid lines on it. You may have to really expand that one out. Okay. But I'll give you a few minutes on that one. All right, so for this particular question here, okay, so if we're looking at the um, the graph, okay, the first part is what's the average velocity of the bus during the seg segments labeled A, B, and C? All right, so during the segment labeled A, we go, we change our position from zero to 25. All right, so for calculating average velocity, okay, our change in position is 25 meters, okay, or sorry, 25 kilometers. Right? And that's positive because that's all they give us on the graph. And that takes us one hour. Right? So obviously then our velocity is positive 25 kilometers per hour for that part. Okay? In the second part, we go from 25 kilometers per hour to what looks like 34. No. What are we looking at here? 33? Probably 33. Okay, so we go from 25 to 33. Okay, so what's our change in position during part B? Eight kilometers. All right, so again, okay, we got average velocity. Our change in position is eight kilometers, positive eight kilometers, right? And that takes um, another hour and a quarter, okay, because it comes down right in the middle here. So 1.25 hours. So if we go eight divided by 1.25, we should get positive 6.4 kilometers per hour during that time. Everybody all right with what I've done there? Okay. And then during the last part, we go from our 33, uh, position of po positive 33 kilometers down to a position of what looks like 27 kilometers there. Okay, uh, so that's a change of negative six. All right, so our average velocity here will be negative six divided by, that takes us, um, another one and a quarter hours, okay, which should give us negative 4.8 kilometers per hour for a velocity on that. Okay, the last part asks over the whole trip. Okay, so we need total displacement divided by total time. Well, our total displacement is going to be 27 kilometers because that's our final position. Our initial position is zero, okay, divided by the entire time, 3.5 which should give us positive 7.7 .7 kilometers per hour. Okay, questions on any of those? Right, that's exactly the kind of thing you could get asked to do with a position versus time graph okay, uh, on an exam or a quiz, like maybe on Thursday, you might have to do that. Okay. All right, moving on. Okay, velocity versus time graphs. Actually, you know what? I'm going to give you guys about a three-minute break here, and then I'll talk about velocity versus time graphs. So for velocity versus time graphs, okay, what can we read directly off the graph? Velocity and time. So we know how fast and in what direction the object is going at any point in time that is on the graph. Okay, that's what it'll tell us. Um, now, there's lots of things I can calculate off of a velocity versus time graph, okay? um, but we'll go over those here in just a minute. Okay? Right now, though, I want to show you these two graphs. One's a position versus time graph. The other is a velocity versus time graph. Okay? What is the position versus time graph on the left showing me? Okay, what kind of motion, sorry, is going on on this graph? Right, it's traveling at a constant positive or forward velocity. Everyone okay with that? What's the velocity versus time graph showing? Something traveling at a constant forward velocity. Okay, There's an instinct for us to say, oh, it's stopped because the line is flat. But remember, this is showing us its velocity. It's just telling us its velocity is not changing. If it was stopped, the line would have to be where? At zero, right? Then it would be stopped. Okay. All right. Um, in reality, these two graphs are actually of the same motion, of the same object. Okay, They're, one is the position versus time graph of the object, the other is the velocity versus time graph of the same object. Okay, We can prove that by calculating how fast the object is going using the position versus time graph. How do I get the velocity off of this graph? I can use V equals D over T, which is the same as calculating the slope of the line. All right, so if I'm looking at the slope of the line here, I'm just going to say that y equals, or sorry, m equals y minus b over x. So y is going to be 1400, okay, right here, minus b, which is 100. 
divided by x, which is 5 seconds. All right, so that's 1,300 over 5, which should be 260 meters per second. Everybody all right with that? Is that about where the line is on that velocity versus time graph? Yeah, it is. Okay, this is the same motion. Okay, on this graph, I could calculate the displacement of the object just by going 1,400 minus 100. The displacement of this object is going to be 1,300 meters. Everyone okay with that? How would I calculate it off the velocity versus time graph? Right, velocity times time. I would go average velocity times time equals d, which would be the equivalent of calculating the area underneath the line. Okay, the average velocity is 260 times 5 seconds gives me 1,300 meters. Everybody all right with that? Okay, so now instead of looking at these two graphs here, let's say that this graph instead looked like that. What's that object doing? It's accelerating, right? Okay. Could I calculate its rate of acceleration? Okay, how would I do that? The slope of the line. Okay, in science 10, you learned this acceleration formula. A equals VF minus VI over T. Okay, ringing a bell? Delta V over delta T. Okay, that's how you calculated acceleration in science 10. So acceleration is the rate at which you change your velocity. So if we take the change in velocity and divide by the time, we get the rate of acceleration. All right. Now, if I'm looking at this graph and I want to calculate that, this would be my VF. Okay, I'm a little beyond here, so that'll be um, 550, okay, according to my graph. And okay, this down here would be my time. So my final velocity would be 550. My initial would be... 100, okay, and then I would calculate, okay, um, so 550 minus 100, okay, divided by the time, and I would have my rate of acceleration. What have I also calculated about that line by doing that? It's slope, okay, this is the same as right, that's y minus b over x. Right? That formula is derived in exactly the same way that b equals d over t was derived from a position versus time graph. Okay, so that acceleration formula that you used all through science 10 is actually just the slope of a velocity versus time graphs line. Okay, um, how would I calculate the displacement of that object? Right, average velocity times time. So I would take the average velocity. Okay, it started at 100 uh, and went to 550. So halfway between 100 and 550 would be the average. Okay, base times height over two. Right, I'm calculating the area of the triangle. Okay, and that'll give me the average, or sorry, the total displacement of that object. Okay, so all the stuff we learned from Science 10, we just have to kind of refresh it, review it, so that we know what we're doing with that stuff. Okay, is that ringing a bell? Right, because Tomorrow we're gonna to do the lab that has to do with position versus time graphs. Next week, after we've talked about acceleration, then we'll do another lab. This one will be on velocity versus time graphs and accelerating objects. Okay, so it'll be, they'll be similar, but we'll be analyzing different kinds of graphs in each one. Okay. All right. What's going on in that graph? It's a velocity versus time graph. What's going on in the first part? It's accelerating, okay? Now, for this first little bit here, the acceleration is not uniform. There's a curve, okay? That just means that the acceleration is not constant, okay? And that's usually what happens at the very beginning of a race, okay? The acceleration at the very beginning of a race is very non-uniform because you're pushing off starting blocks and then getting your feet on the, on the track. And so your acceleration isn't uniform until you're basically upright and then accelerating from there. It becomes very uniform after that. Okay, then as you approach your top speed, your acceleration becomes non-uniform again because you're pulling really hard, but you can't really go any faster. So it, it, your, excel, your rate of acceleration decreases because you can't physically do what? 
you can't go any faster. Okay, so you run and push as hard as you can, but you don't speed up anymore, right? So you run at this constant velocity until you get to the finish line. And then you very abruptly change your velocity from as fast as you could go to to not running anymore, right? The velocity returns to zero at the bottom of that graph or the end of that graph. Okay, so the person comes to a stop. All right. um, now, this person is not very fast, okay? They only run at eight. I know eight meters per second seems really fast, but okay, Usain Bolt at top speed is somewhere in the neighborhood of 17 meters per second at top speed. Obviously, he doesn't run the whole race at that speed. He has to accelerate for like the first two thirds of it. Okay, but when he is at top speed, he is literally covering nearly 20 meters in one second. Okay, that is like freakish. Beyond, I mean, he is just, he's a freak. There's just, yeah, okay. that how fast that guy can run is just beyond comprehension. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's essentially the shape of any sprinter's graph would look something like this. Okay, hurdles, Ryan, look different. They shouldn't. If you do them right, they shouldn't, but they always do. They have this weird thing okay, that goes on during the hurdles. But okay, so if you don't have anything in front of you, you're not crazy, okay, then uh, your graph would look like that. Okay. So big things to remember about velocity versus time graphs, okay? The vertical values for any point on the graph represent the velocity. We can read velocity right off the graph, okay? The area under the line on a velocity versus time graph is equal to the displacement of the object. In other words, we are doing this, average velocity times time equals D, okay? That's what goes along with this, okay? That's why this works, and we want to make sure we understand why that works. Okay, questions on velocity versus time graphs. Okay. I know we're not spending a whole lot of time on it, but that's because there's really nothing new to teach you that you haven't already done okay, in Science 10. So we just want to kind of refresh everything with that. Okay, so we're going to go over a couple of examples here. Um, we'll look at this one first. Okay, so um, this graph here goes with question number six. All right, it's also in your um, uh, booklet here. Okay. It would be yeah, it's question 13 on here for whatever reason, but okay. Um, so you can see it in there. or blown up a little bit better here. Okay. Um, so I want you guys to solve for those parts or um, solve from this graph. I don't know why it says kilometers per hour here meters per second here. I think I just made a mistake on the units. It's supposed to be meters per second because obviously the... Let's look at the first um, the first three parts here, the average velocities during each part of the graph. Okay, so during this first part of the graph, which we would call part A, the car increases its velocity from zero, a snowmobile, from zero to 40 uniformly, which means the average is going to be 20. Okay, because for half of the trip it's going slower than 20, and for half the trip it's going faster than 20. Okay, for part B, it travels at a constant velocity of 40 the entire time, so its average is 40. Okay, because it's not changing. Then in the last part, okay, it's average. It it changes its velocity from 40 to 80 uniformly, which means the average velocity is halfway between the initial and final. So the average is 60. All right. The last part is a little bit more involved. If I want to find the average velocity over the entire trip, I need two things. What are they? Total displacement and Okay, total time's easy. I can read it directly off the graph. Total displacement's gonna involve a little bit of work. Okay, you gotta calculate the total displacement of this object from the graph. That'll take you a little bit of time. So I'll give you a few more minutes on that. Looking at this here, guys, real quick. Okay, we got this triangle here, okay, that's 40 high by 20. Okay, so that's, uh, this one should be 400, right? Then we've got this rectangle here, 
right? We got to find the area under the entire line. So that's 40 high by 40. Oh, I went 40 times 60. I typed it in wrong. So we got, uh, yeah, should be 40 times 40. Okay, so this is 1600 and then this is 200. So you're right. Okay, we should have 2200 there. Okay, all right. 36.6, yeah. Okay, but it's not in kilometers per hour. It's in meters per second. Okay, so you got that one there. Okay, we'll talk about this question tomorrow when we, uh, sorry, we'll do the lab tomorrow. Then we'll talk about that question. Okay, all right, we'll see you guys tomorrow.